Hi, you're welcome to Johnson Praise TV. My name is Johnson Praise, and this video is all about UGBS 105. That is introduction to public administration past questions review. I am so excited to walk you through these past questions review. So please make sure you click on the notification bell or you click on the subscribe button to give me a follow. It's not easy to record these videos those of you who are closer to me knows what i went through last week we go through so many problems in in our quest to come up with these videos you know so please if you chance on a video or this video and it is helpful to you please make sure you subscribe and and don't also just subscribe make sure you like you like the video Make sure you comment and share it on your various platforms. Share it with your friends so they can also benefit from the video. This video, I'm going to release two set of videos on public administration. Each video will consist of 35 questions, making 70 questions. So I'm going to what, um, solve 70 questions with you, which will help you prepare adequately for your interim assessment. So please, make sure you watch the video to an end and also interact by what commenting liking subscribing and also sharing on your various platform somebody needs your assistance when you share this video your friend will end up benefiting from it so like i said we do it takes us so many time okay we spend a lot of time in preparing this video i started in the morning around seven and i'm, I'm recording a video around one o'clock so you could see the number of hours i spend in working on this video it's also going to take me like an hour to record or two to record this video and upload it so please any way you also want to support us if you want to support us financially any way you want to support please you are you can donate to our channel by what supporting us also encouraging us to do more i'll be dropping a link under the video that's under the comment section make sure and those of you who are not on our whatsapp channel a time will come that i will not be sharing links on your platform again i upload all my my links on my whatsapp channel okay so make sure you click on the the link and then um subscribe or probably make sure you follow me on whatsapp it's a it's a whatsapp channel no whatsapp no whatsapp group okay i only post my video links there so you, you don't miss any of the videos and when you subscribe to make sure you turn on the notification bell so that when i release a video you can also get access to those video before i start this video i want to let you know that those of you who have businesses and and stuff you want to promote you get in touch with me or probably if if you want to travel and you really need you need more information probably you can you can come to me for consultation or places you want to go i can also help you with some offers help you get a job and also help you with application process throughout all the application process i can help you with those things so if you're interested you can whatsapp me my number is here you can see the number here you can just go through the number you can whatsapp me probably um chat me and i will respond to you so without really wasting my time like i said i'm going to release two videos so when you watch this video after watching this video make sure you also you wait for the next video it will be uploaded as soon as possible okay it will be I'll, I'll upload them all of them at the same time so when you are done you search and then you make sure you get the video and also watch make sure you watch these two videos before you do whatever you want to do it will help you prepare enough because i'll be explaining them well for you let's um get started let's look at number one it says which of okay so which option stifles initiative um and innovation in civil service and in sorry let me take it again so he says that what which op option what stifles initiative and innovation in the civil service of many countries which of them serve as an impediment or which of them serve as a stumbling block to innovation and what you know to innovate um in, to initiative and innovation in civil service in many countries so the options you are going to mention which of them serve as a, a, a stumbling block or serve as a limitation to innovation in many countries that is what the question st uh, states so let's look at the options a flexible rules b dynamic rules c um obsolete rules and then the informal rules so let's look at them 
take them one after the other and explain them so when you talk of flexible rules flexible rules allows for adaptability and what responsiveness in changing circumstances they provide room for discretion and creativity in decision making which can actually encourage innov- initiative and in- innovation within the civil service so the first one is what is is um, it doesn't uh, serve as what a stumbling block so let's look at the second option dynamic rules so dynamic rules rules are they are rules that are designed to to what to uh, evolve and adapt over time in res- in response to new information needs and what and circumstances so which means that dynamic rules is also what not part of the option that what that stay false what innovation let's look at the informal rules so informal rules refers to unwritten norms customs and practices that influence behavior within an organization so now the option is between informal rules and absolute rule let's let's look at the up um the what the absolute rules the absolute obsolete rules so with the obsolete rules it's what it's a regulation or guidelines that has become outdated and no longer serves it what intended purpose efficiently these rules may have been relevant at point at at what at one point in time but are no longer applicable or practical due to what changing changes in what circumstances technology and societal norms so for me Okay, since I'm not the one who said the question, for me, if you ask me, I'll go with what? Obsolete rules. Obsolete rules. Even though the, the informal rules are what? They, they also sometimes what, in, uh, uh, serve as what? Uh, uh, impediment. Okay, these two options. Okay, I'm, I, we are between these two options. Okay, but for me, I may go for obsolete rules. Some some of these unwritten rules sometimes also what create this kind of problems. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't really what go with innovation. Okay, but for me, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. So like I already said, you know, with the absolute rules because it is outdated, it 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 goes against innovation and initiatives okay so for me if you ask me i'll go with what obsolete rules obsolete rules so let's look let's move on to number two the first book the first book on public administration was written by a fifna and what prisoners a b l d white and then we have c simon Smithberg and Thompson and then D Ian Gladden. So the answer is what? The answer is L D White. So L D White is often credited with the writing of the first book on public administration titled Introduction to the Study of Public Administration, published in nineteen twenty six. While Woodrow Wilson Woodrow Wilson's essay, which is what? The study of public administration is considered as what? As a seminar work in the field, right? So when we talk about the first book, the first public administration book, the credit has to be given to B.L.D. White, okay? B.L.D. White, right? Let's move to number three. Africanization of the public service by the colonial administration was aimed at a self rule b recolonization c decentralization and d democracy so um the option the answer is what self rule so so the africanization of the public administration by colonial administration aimed at promoting self rule of self governance within the territories under the colonial rule it it involved effort to increase the participation of African individual in various rules within the organization, within within the public service, including administrative, bureaucratic, and government position, by allowing Africans to take on more responsibilities and titles traditionally held by the colonial officials. The colonial administration administrations intended to pave way to pave the way for 
continual independence and self governance for the colonies. The process was part of broader movement towards decolonization and the transfer of power from colonial ru rulers to indigenous population. So we, the answer is what? Self-rule. So the Africanization of public service by the colonial administration was aimed at what? Self-rule to, to actually equip them to be able to rule themselves. Number four, which of the following? Which of the following administrative thinkers has defined administration, administration as the organization and direction of human and material resources to achieve desired ends? Which of them define what administration as what? As the organization and direction of human and material resources to achieve desired ends. So we have a e we have what L L D White. B, we have for G M Fina, uh, Fifna, and we have C G E Vig, and then uh, D, we have for A Simon. So, which one is the answer? The answer is what G M Fifna, G M Fifna. Right. Let's move on. G M Fifna actually define public administration or define administration as what organization and direction of human and material resources to achieve desired ends. Let's move to number five. The chiefs are banned from working actively in the public services of Ghana through or false. The chiefs are banned from working actively in the public service of Ghana. Is it true or is it false? So this one, um, the chiefs, okay, the chiefs, are they allowed to work as public servant or they are what they are banned from what working as public servants right so it is false the answer is false the chiefs are not banned from working actively in the public service of ghana but there are certain regulations okay that actually limit them from what participating in political activities they are not obliged to participate in political activities, but they, for them, they are not banned from what? For, 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 for working actively in the public service. But for politically, they have what? They advise from, from what? Working from working what? Or actually what? Participating in what? Political activities in the countries. Okay? But they are not banned from working actively in the public service of Ghana. Let's move on to number Okay. All right, so this is this is um something I have already explained to you. Let's move to number 6. An organization using an organization using its resources wisely and in a cost effective way is considered as is considered as i'm taking it again an organization using its resources wisely in a cost effective way is considered as a conservative b more than c effective and then d efficient so here if an organization is using its resources wisely in a cost effective way we say it is being what efficient that organization is being what efficient, not conservative, no more than not effective, but what efficient. So management includes integrating the work of what of people through planning organization, leading and control and controlling of the organization resources. Okay. Effectiveness means to ensure to use what to use resources wisely and cost efficient effectively right so effectiveness means what to use resources wisely and cost effectively number seven which of the following is not a function of a staff agency a planning b advising c consultation d achieving goals so someone who is a staff assuming you're a public servant okay as a staff which of the following Mm, it's not your function okay so all the options listed here are what are 
are, are, are functions of staffs with the exception of the which is what achieving goals it is not the, the function of the staff to ensure that the goals of the companies are achieved but the staff are involved in planning advising and what consultation right so staff agencies support and assist line agencies in achieving their goals okay but they do not directly achieve but they do not directly what achieve goals themselves right okay so achieving goals is not a function of what the um the staff agency okay number eight one who tells okay so one who tells one supervisor anything detrimental to an associate is called okay you are in an organization and anything you do you realize anything you discuss with your colleagues, you realize your manager has heard or has gotten a hint about it. There are people like that, okay? I have been a victim. I don't know about you, but there are some specific people in your, your organization who always want to back, back, back bite you, want to what? To, to say something about you in order for to gain favor or probably get uh, other things i don't or probably to destroy your reputation in order to get position or whatever so these people how do we call them okay so we have what a a squealer okay a squealer b uh, a, re, uh, a red booster c or a chisler and then d none of the above so the answer is what a squealer a squealer somebody so a squealer refers to someone who informs and reports something detrimental about a colleague or associate to their supervisors or, author, or authority figure. This action is often seen as what betraying trust or being disloyal in the colleague in question. Essentially, essentially a squealer is someone who squeals or informs on others, usually for personal gain to avoid trouble themselves, right? So these people, when you are talking with them, they keep quiet. And the anything, some some of them will even talk to you nicely, but they will not go and tell their supervisor whatever they said. But anything that you said, the supervisor will hear about it. So that's why if you are in a, like an, an organization, you have to be very careful about people. So we are learning solving past question and also what learning. It's not everything you discuss with your colleagues, things about your promotion, things about your development, things about your work, how you 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 your secret or how you get your 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 work done or how people please actually praises you or maybe things you do to get praises you don't have to discuss it your personal achievement you can can have a normal talk but not everything because you know these people some of them can 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 make you lose your job and they can they can make them fire you at any time let's look at number nine the legal provisions outlining the function of the civil server civil service are found in the legal provisions outlining the function of the civil service is our outline in a pndc law 329 b pndc law 328 c pndc law 326 and then the pndc law 327 so the answer is what pndc law 327 so definition of a civil servant clause one which is what the civil servant is that part of what the public service that is concerned with what the service in a civil capacity in both central and what local government as well as as as, as provided in what the p and as provided in what in the civil service law 1993 act 327 so it is provided in what the civil service law act in 1993 act 327 so i'm giving you a try question in ghana the term the term okay in ghana the term of the president is a four years b five years c six years d seven years i want everybody watching this video to drop this answer the term of every president is how many years a four years b five years c six years d seven years so please drop it under the comment section Click on it if you are watching it from WhatsApp or anywhere. Come to come to YouTube and participate in this quiz. I will be marking. Okay, if it is five years, drop it. Five, six, seven, eight, four years, drop it. Let me see. Now my eleven. A plan that generally covers a span of one year 
or less is called a operational plan b immediate plan c long-term plan and then d short-term plan so a, a plan that covers what covers a span of one year or less is called a short-term plan so a short-term plan typically covers a span of one year or less it outlines specific actions objectives and goals that an organization aims to achieve within a relatively short free a uh, short time okay the short term plan are often focused on immediate priorities and what tax providing a detailed roadmap and imp for, for implementation within a shorter time horizon and these are what most of the policies that our leaders normally implement for us just yes, what to gain political power or to gain vote they don't plan short term a uh, long term but they rather plan long short term for us so they take their vote from you and then that is how so this is how african leaders are okay number 12 so we are going to another try question okay number 10 was a try question number 11 the first book on public administration was written by a pifna and prestus prestus b l d white c simon smithson and thompson and d e n gladden so which one of them i've already solved this question with you if you get it wrong i will ask you so drop it to number 12 drop the answer under the comment section comment and let me see if you are following whatever i'm doing with keen interest or you are just listening okay whatever that you are doing here you have to pay attention to it okay number 13 legal rational authority is a core concept of a public choice theory b theory of emergency c maslow's theory of motivation d we have theory of bureaucracy and e none of the above. so the answer is what legal um the answer here is what the theory of bureaucracy so legal rational authority is a core concept within the theory of bureaucracy particularly associated with the work of social sociologist Karl Marx okay hey sorry Marx Weber right forgive me about it okay I'm I'm, I'm used to his name I, I normally mention because I'm a sociologist too so his work is associated with the work of what Marx Weber okay so this concept describes a form of authority that is based on a on a system of rules and regulation where authority where where authority figures where authority figures drive their um, legitimacy from established laws and procedures rather than personal characteristics or traditional customs, right? So let's move to number 14. Woodrow Wilson said self-government does not consist of having a hand in everything. Okay, so did he say that? True or false? Okay, the answer is true. Yes, Woodrow Wilson, okay, Woodrow Wilson indeed stated that self-government does not consist of having a hand in everything this statement reflects on what wilson's wilson's perspective on the role of government emphasizing that self-government does not maintain direct government in every aspect of what citizens life right so he argued for a more limited government rule with a focus on providing essential service, maintaining order, and protecting individual rights and freedom. Let's move to number 15. Small, small, we'll finish, right? So never, never log out. Just continue watching. We'll finish very soon. Okay, so um, effective public participation in development projects majorly, need, majorly needs which of the following? A, occupational consultation b active association with the whole project cycle d a c which is what administrative initiative more than people's initiative and the gender sensitivity so if you want people okay if you want effective public participation in development projects okay all of them are, are options but we want the one what the one that's what the major one okay that will enable people to participate more in what a development project so which of them so the answer is what the answer is what um which is b b this active association with the whole project so 
Effective public participation in development projects necessitate active involvement and engagement of the public throughout the entire project cycle, from the planning from the planning and design phases to implementation, monitoring and evaluation. This means that the community members, stakeholders and beneficiary beneficiaries should have opportunities to contribute their insight, preference and feedback at every stage of the project. Active association with the with the project cycle ensures that the perspective of the needs of the people are considered are considered and integrated into tax into decision making processes leading to a more inclusive and sustainable development outcomes it promotes transparency accountability and ownership of the project among the if affected community ultimately enhancing the project effectiveness and relevance number 16 a theory suggesting that people are motivated by hierarchy of needs was advanced by so who actually propounded this theory or who actually what came up with this theory that um, uh, people are motivated by what hierarchy hierarchy of needs okay who brought this idea a douglas mark grigor b Arthur D. Little, C. Abraham uh, Maslow, and then D. F. W. Rick. So the social studies students, you know more about Abraham Maslow. So he actually propounded the theory of um, how they call it hierarchy system. Okay, the hierarchy system. So it is what Abraham Maslow. So Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs is the idea in psychology propounded. Uh, proposed by our American psychologist as Abraham Maslow in 1943 paper a theory of human motivation okay so um okay okay so the answer is already known so let's move on number 17 which of the following is not part of the public administration system a political party b district assembly c parliament and d judicial uh, judiciary so which of them is not part of what uh, the public administration system it is political party political parties are not part of the public administration system and this question we need not to spend like a second on this question so let's move forward pa political parties are not part of what uh, public administration system take note number 18 public service bureaucratic rules okay so public service bureaucratic rules emanate solely from the executive through or forth. So we want to know whether the public, uh, the public service bureaucratic rules, so the bureaucratic rules, the rules that they implement, okay, do, e, do they emanate or do they come from the executive alone or the other arms contribute to that? So I went to it, what I chose B, which is false, okay? And so the bureaucratic rules in the public service can originate from sources other than just the executive branch, including the legislature, including the legislative uh, and judicial branches, as well as what independent regulatory regulatory agencies. So these agencies can what, implement a rule, or they can actually what come up with a law. And the public, the bureaucracy, or the public service are supposed to what. To, to, they have no option than to obey it, okay? So that's my justification for choosing that. Number 19, power that has been legitimized by the state is called A, political power, B, charismatic power, C, traditional authority, and D, legal, rational authority. So the answer is what? D, that's legal, rational authority. So the legal, rational authority refers to power or authority that is based on rules and procedures established by the state okay so in this form of authority individuals or institutions drive their legitimacy from what adherence to the laws and regulation that have been enacted through formal processes such as legislation or constitutional provisions all right so this authority is characterized by a system of rules and procedures that govern the exercise of power ensuring that decisions and actions are rational predictable and consistent with established legal framework so 
that is what the traditional authority when you take the traditional authority like this it is what based on personal qualities and charisma right and then when you take the um the rest of the the rest of them out are not really what part of the uh, the option stated but the answer is what legal rational authority okay legal rational authority now let's let's move to number 20 which of the following is not a feature of a good governance a accountability b transparency c nepotism and d rule of law you all know nepoti nepotism is bad okay nepotism sectionalism cronyism tribalism favoritism all of them are what very bad in the other cause they are the reasons why the country is still what uh, not developed okay somebody will get a job and 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 they are qualified and competent people that can do the job but they employ the appointed people to go and work okay while the competent people are there so the quality in ghana here the the, the right people are at home whilst what uh, most i'm not saying those that are doing these things are not qualified but most of the people that are the various posts are not qualified for such positions because of what favoritism so this is a practice that we need not to uh, 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 to relate in this country it is what it is a killer okay to development in a country so ne nepotism favoritism sectionalism cronyism uh, um, how do you call it sectionalism i've mentioned of that i mentioned that already tribalism ethnicity uh, those things this tribal bigot they are not they are things we should what we should do away with they are not good okay so nepotism means uh, nepot nepotism means what a favoritism showing showing to what relatives or close associates especially appointing them to positions without regard to their qualifications or ability so the person because you know the person the person is your friend you appoint the person while they are qualified people there so we, if you want to develop, we should do away with all these things. So let's go there and implement these things. As you are learning to be a very good public servant or be a very good manager, learn, let's learn to implement, employ people based on their qualification, their competence more than what, their, uh, uh, their relationship and other stuff, which sometimes affect development. Let's look at number 21. There are two forms of rules of human organization, true or false. Yes, so in every human organization, there are formal and informal rules, right? So I went, I chose what? True because it is what? Any human organization, there's what? Formal and informal rules, right? Let's look at number 22. Judicial control can be achieved. Okay, so judicial control can achieve administrative accountability successfully if a rules of law are strictly followed b the process sh should not be cumbersome c judicial process should be easy and applicable uh, approachable and d administrative administration administrative action must be uh, must be under judicial review so the answer is a which is what rule of law is strictly what follow so the judicial control can be achieved okay can i can achieve administrative accountability if what rule of law are strictly followed so judicial control refers to what the power of the judiciary to review and potentially invalidate or modify actions taken by other other branches of government such as what the executive or legislative branches this control is exercised through mechanisms like the judicial review where court assesses the legality and, and, and constitutionality of government actions, laws, or policies. Judicial control serves as, as a check and balance on the exercise of government, governmental power, ensuring it remains within the bounds of the law and upholds what constitutional principles. So let's do another try question. That's try question four, right? This is our try question four. Okay, so an organization is this this is three or okay. So an organization is using its resources wisely in a cost effective way is considered as what A conservative conservative B more than C if effective and then D efficient. We have solved it already. If if not if you, if you couldn't go through this question well then you have to watch from the beginning to an end, you will understand it. So those of you who followed from beginning to this time 
you should be able to tell me the answer. Drop it, number 23, drop it under the comment section. I don't want A or B, I want you to write the full uh, option for me. If you think it is more than effective, efficient, or conservative, write it for me. Number 24, number 24, how can an effective planning be made meaningful? A, it has, so how can an effective planning be made meaningful a it has what the management support b its objective must be clearly defined c its feasibility standard must be shown must show what wisdom and d it provide valuable learning experience so the answer is what b its objective must be clearly defined its objective must be clearly defined let's look at number 25 broke uh, bureaucracy is a Greek word derived from A, bureau and kratis, B, bureau and kratis, C, bureau and kratos, and then D, bureau and kratos. So which one is the answer? The answer is B, C, which is what? Bureau and kratos, bureau and kratos. So bureau and kratos. So I extracted this from Wikipedia. So the term bureaucracy originated from French language it combines what okay so so this is what it combines they said so they rather use what the French word rather okay but um, you can also confirm for me I, I got this from Wikipedia if it is really true since they are saying it's a French word I don't know if they will use the practice okay so it will be between A and then A and C but let's see because I'm confused because I didn't really check because this one is saying liquid and this is also saying French. So if it is French, probably there might be similarity. So you can confirm it yourself. And let's see. So it combines French word bureau, which is what dex or office, with what Greek word. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So the Greek word is rather the kratos. Okay. So a rule, that's rule or political power. So I'm not wrong. So the bureau is what French word and then the the kratos is what is a greek word right so kratos so bureau and kratos the answer is correct okay uh, my answer is correct that is what a uh, c number 26 the wing theory the wing theory of the civil service bureaucracy was propounded between the years 1980s to 19 to 18 uh, so, sorry, 1780s to 1828. 20, so, is it true or false? The answer is false. So, the wing theory of the civil service bureaucracy was pro propounded between the years 1928, 1828 to 1880s. It, it is not 1780s to 1828, right? So, that is not the correct answer. The answer is false. Number 27. System theory of management is based on the concept of components having A, independence, B, interdependence, C, dependence, and then D, contingency. So the system theory of management is based on the concept of what? Compon uh, of components having what? A, uh, having the answer is what? B, having what? Interdependence. Okay, so the system theory of management is based on component having what interdependence all right it is having so the system theory approach of money so the system approach the systems approach to management theory commonly viewed as what the foundation of organizational development view as organization having open system made up of what interrelated and interdependent part that interact with subsystem so it's what interrelated and interdependent we have what interdependence here so we, we are good to go right that's why i'm giving you evidences to my answer number 28 number 28 so this one was 20 okay 28 28 public administration is concerned with the management of public programs Okay, so who actually came up with this definition that public administration is concerned with what the management of public programs? A, then, uh, then Hart, uh, how do you call it? Then Hart and then Hart. B, uh, Gulick and White. C, 
Wilson and Madison and D. Um, good no and um, how do you call it? Then, um, then Hart. Okay, good no and then Hart. So, um, I chose what good no and what then white. Good no and then white. So let me see. Okay. Okay. So I chose what. Uh, good good now and what then hard all right so that is it let's move on to number 29 this um the civil service was defined as what professional body of official permanent paid and skilled so we have what a heman finer b o uh, o g uh, style okay o g style d fellas Negro and then D E N Gladden. So the answer is what? Human Finer. Human Finer defined a public service as what? As as a professional body of official, permanent, paid and unskilled, right? So that is his definition for public administration. Number thirty, there are former institutions in every organization. There are former institutions in every organization. It's for true. Every organization, before you can even call, classify it as an organization, it first has to be formal. It has to have written rules and stuff. Okay, you can't form a company without registering it, without having uh, a clear um, rules that governs that institution. It can never be regarded as what? An organization. Let's look at number 31. It's a, it's a try question. So it says what? The Queen theory of civil service a bureaucracy was propounded between the years of um, 1780s to 1828. Is it true or false? This one, we have done it already. So it's a try question. Drop it under the uh, comment section. That is number 31. Drop it under the comment section. Okay. So I'm not going to solve it again because I'll solve it with you. If you have not watched the full video, begin from session one and watch everything that we have discussed. You will know the answer. Number 32. Which of the following will not be considered as formal organization a hospital b university c group of friends and d um service industry a service industry so the answer is what group of friends group of friends can never be regarded or considered as formal organization okay they don't have any rating rules there's what there's no guidelines there's there's no what hierarchy there Okay, group of friends there's nothing like that but when you take all these things there's what there are rules that governs them number 33 henry files general theory of administration is applicable at a uh, public policy uh, public management level b top management level c middle management level and d workshop management level so the answer is the answer is b that is top management level so henry files theory of administration also known as what fiolism is a management theory that focuses on principles and functions of management applic applicable at the top level of organization okay fire uh, fire proposed what 14 principle of management which include division of work authority and responsibility discipline unity of command unity of direction subordination of individual interest to the general interest remuneration uh, centralization scalar chain order equity stability of tenure of of personnel initiative and esprit the cops right so these are his 14th his 14th principle so number 34 all right number 34 the father of human relations theory was a douglas m uh, McGregor B, Ethan Mayer C, uh, E. N. Gladden, and then D. Elwick. So the answer is what Ethan Mayer. So the father of human relations theory, theory is generally considered as Ethan Mayer. Uh, Mayer. Okay. So Mayer conducted a, a whole ton experiment in the 1920s and 1930s, which highlighted the importance of social and psychological factors in the workplace and emphasize the significance of employee satisfaction, motivation, and relationship in organizational productivity and effectiveness, right? So number 35, number 35, the 
the cabinet of the executive is not part of the public service bureaucracy through or for the cabinet okay the cabinet of the executive is not part of the uh, public service bureaucracy through or for the answer is false so the cabinet of the executive is indeed part of what the public service bureaucracy in almost government system the cabinet consists of high rank officials ministers and secretaries who are responsible for making major policy decisions and overseeing implementation of government policy uh, policies and programs right so these cabinet members are typically part of the executive branch of government and work closely with the public service bureaucracy to develop implement and administer policies and programs therefore so it is what part so that is all about that's the end of this video please make sure if this video has been beneficial to you please share it to your various platform for me and also if you want to support us okay if you want to support financially or any way you want to support this channel okay or else we, we we do a lot i do a lot a lot of work really go through this thing so if you want to support okay but it's not by force if you wish to support you can also get in touch with us and we'll also continue motivate us and we'll continue to we'll do more for you god bless you for your time we we'll see you in the next video part two is ready so i'll be dropping the part two as soon as possible make sure you watch the part two and make sure you 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 you, you pay attention to everything i'm doing here which i believe it will be beneficial to you god bless you for your time thank you